Hello, welcome everybody. Good evening, or should I say good afternoon to our friends out in Hawaii. My name is Lanceman Heitzma. I'm the SNISOA Senior Director of Operations. And today, co-moderating with me is my partner in crime, Mark Cahen, NISOA's Director of Video Instruction. Tonight's event is the second installment of the NISOA Summer Educational Series Professional Development. Uh, this follows the recent presentation by Alex Cruz, who focused on managing the game. A recording of Alex Cruz's presentation can be found on NISOA's YouTube channel. I highly, highly recommend you go check out NISOA's YouTube channel for additional educational opportunities. And while you're there, subscribe to the channel. So this way, after uh, our webinars in the future, when the, when the information gets uploaded, you will receive an instant notification of when it is posted. The NISOA Summer Educational Series will run through August with a variety of programs that will serve our members from a double down focus on the new rules to topic specific professional development opportunities like tonight. From some of the best instructors around the college game and also we will be having one more joint clinic with our partners at ECSR in August. <laughs> We're thrilled to continue to offer these experiences that engage, educate, and inspire our members to be better every game. With that said, we are extremely excited and proud and honored to have today's guest speaker, NISOA's second favorite uncle after Christina, Ted Uncle, who Ted is a FIFA referee since 2016. He's a proud NISOA member since 2000, and he's officiated in five college cups. But before we get to Ted, first we need to lay some of the ground rules of engagement. Mark, can you take this away? Thanks, Lance. Absolutely. So rules of engagement tonight, we encourage you all to be part of the conversation. And tonight there are two ways that you can connect. First, using the chat on the side, the Zoom webinar chat, you can have conversation with the other attendees, or you can also use the question and answer feature to ask a question. And you can also like someone else's question and it gives it a little bit more weight. So we're gonna be monitoring this chat tonight, as well as the question and answer session and uh, surfacing questions to Ted, who will answer them for us. So your, vi your video feature will be turned off, so there will be no video. And uh, tonight, focus on the poll feature that we're gonna be using as well. So when the time arrives for that, you'll receive a pop-up with a question. You have about 10 to 15 seconds to answer it. So Ted will be showing you a video and asking for your input. It's anonymous. We'll look at the answers in an aggregate. And so don't worry, don't, don't be worried, you know, about others judging your response. It's a safe place for you to learn. So we uh, encourage you to participate to maximize your learning experience tonight. And now bringing it back to you, Lance. Thank you, Mark. Ted? It's all you, man. Take it away. <clears throat> Lance, I appreciate it, Mark, as well. I mean, it's something, um, this is special for me, especially seeing you two guys in the position that you're in. We obviously grew up uh, together on the fields until Lance decided to referee in the gym. And uh, Mark and I continue to you know, perfect this game that we all we all love uh, love to do. So uh, I appreciate that, you know, allowing us, allowing me to come in uh, even though I'm your second favorite uncle in, in NISOA. The, the favorite one's downstairs right now taking care of Quinn. Uh, I've kind of gained a, a reputation over time uh, of, uh, of having something to do with the penalty area, uh, penalty area incidents. I don't know if that's the, uh, the quantity that I've uh, come up in the, the matches that I've, I've been a part of or, or the little bit of uh, mustard that may be on, on some of the calls or uh, you know, the, the flavor that, that comes along with it. But, uh, but it's, a, it's great to be able to talk about it because we get so caught up in the educational portion of, of what we do and we talk about KMIs and obviously the penalty area falls, falls under that. Um, and, and you guys have heard me before and I'll be the first to say that you know, the entire game is so important, right? 90 plus minutes we can go without a penalty area decision or a red card decision and it's really about like, hey, how do we – I recall the fouls and stuff, but you know, let's put the focus on why the penalty area is so important. 
and, uh, and, and I'm happy to do that. The slide showing right now uh, probably should be the, uh, the 18. Uh, Doug, can we bring that up? Next slide there. I mean, it's, it, it's what we know of it. And, and, and truly, by definition, it's the depth of, of the penalty area. We don't have to enter it. Uh, we, do, we better know what's going on in it and around it. And we have to work towards that to be in the best position possible to make the best decision possible. Um, and the one thing that we can ask as, as a referee is to, to be able in a, to be in a position to have all the information to make that decision. We trust ourselves in these down period times uh, to be educated on the rules. The, you know, obviously, in this case, the, the NCAA rules, um, you know, we use our considerations. We use everything there and, and you know, trust ourselves to process that in the moment. The pressure around the penalty area is massive. It is, uh, it is the one place where a foul can turn into a red card. A foul can turn into uh, a, a goal scoring opportunity. Uh, and, and that's to be said. There's a, a bunch of examples of amazing work throughout the college game that I've included in this presentation. And if we start with that in the next slide, Doug, we're going to let some of these videos go through, take a look, uh, pick out uh, the elements, and we're going to break each of these down uh, in, the, in the upcoming slides. Let's let this one play right here. And the one great thing about the college game is, man, you you get a feeling from uh, from a Division One men's game to Division Three women's game, and Division you know NAIA stuff, and all this all this how it, it presents us all of these different challenges, and how in these situations in particular, man, we've we've reached that reached that bar, and we uh, we make some big time decisions uh, to get these right. As we're watching these, go on to the next uh, next uh, slide there, Doug. I think we missed one there where it says the 44. I think the one thing we do forget as, as referees, like we call it the penalty area and we call it the 18 for short, man, that thing is 44 yards wide. And that's a big, it's a big area to, to be able to, uh, you know, to have authority over, to be able to control, to, you know, to be able to put yourself in the position when teams are trying to score. Um, so let's let's give some examples on this next slide. You're going to see some examples of, of lateral movement. Nope, the, uh, the video is one slide back, Doug, please. Yep, some lateral movement on these decisions. Let's we'll let this one play. Excellent. Go to the next slide where it shows actually the penalty area, Doug. Green, the green, um, green, there we go. The green one. There we go. One thing I want to give a heads up to everybody that's watching as we go on through these clips, I want you to pay attention and I'll bring these up as well. Not only what the referee is doing, but how, uh, where are we are in the game? What's the score of the game? How much time's left in this match? And all of this, because I'll say that I tried to get these these stats, Lance. If maybe I should have reached out to you a bit more, and, and Mark, we maybe we get a hundred of these down. But I wanted to know how many uh, college games in 2019, back when we could actually uh, shake hands and and hug the ones we love, way back when, you know, how many games in 2019 were decided by a goal or less? And I know in the college game, right, we have a ties and we go into over time, and we can even remain in ties. And that's another discussion to be had. Um, you know, is, is that extra 20, uh, 20 minutes worth it over the course? But uh, neither here nor there. But we tried to get that stat and, and, and couldn't. However, uh, Tori Penso, uh, who's an amazing, uh, doing an amazing job in her role, uh, got me a stat that 19% of games in 2019 went into OT. Now, I want you to just think like 19% isn't a lot, but I tried to to liken that to uh, to the MLS, 
And the MLS in 2019, we had 22 games that ended up in a tie or would have been into OT. We had, uh, or sorry, 22%. We had 157 out of 408 games end in one goal or less. So combined, 61% of our games were one goal or less. And this is a, a whistle here or, or a non-whistle here in a penalty area has that much of an impact. We know that, uh, you know, that goals are at a premium in soccer. Um, and if you look at this, one, it shows you that there is a right side to the penalty area. Maybe some of us need to be a little bit better at, at recognizing that. Uh, the penalty arc, uh, otherwise known as uh, zone 14 per, per Allen Black, whatever, we've always been taught from our early days of trying to stay out of there. The reason for that is where the ball is going to come back to. Uh, scoring chances are created from there. You can see in these clips that the ball comes from there quite a bit or bounces back there quite a bit. Um, but, you know, there's a thing that I do before every one of my matches when we go and we walk the field to see, hey, is this field playable or not in Montserrat, Lance? Um, or, you know, somewhere in, in middle America, is this field playable? You know, every time I get around the penalty area in my normal walk, I'll do it all the time. As I go to the right side of the D, I go to the left side of the D, and I visualize looking into that goal mouth. Uh, and into the penalty mar penalty mark area to see, you know, what if a ball served in there or that's the, the drop zone, like how am I going to be able to see through those players or what's going to be in the background that's not going to be distracting me to the game? I can prepare myself just with that little thing that we're going to – you check the field anyway in doing so. So if we go to that first uh, – the next slide, Doug, and, and go to this first video. And, and uh, Ted, just real quickly yeah. too, especially especially for the collegiate game. Because as we know, we can only review, if we have video review, we can only review certain uh, instances in the match. And the penalty area is not one of those instances. So you need to be extremely careful around the penalty area. And you need to put yourself in the best position and best angle possible to view the situation. Because just like you said, games are won and lost in the penalty area. Absolutely. And this first clip is a great example of this. And it's one of the polling or one of the ones that I want to poll. So if we can go to that first video, um, next slide there, Doug. Oh, you went back a slide. Is that yeah, it? right here. That's it right here. Yeah, the Providence Georgetown game. All right, let's stop it. Stop it. Okay, let's pull. Let's pull this one. What's the decision here? Ah, it looks like I can't vote. That's a shame. Well, Ted, I hope they get this one right. I mean, it was on the stimulus quiz. If if they need a hint, yes. <laughs> let's hope so. How am I? Hey, uh, Lance. How am I going to see the uh, results of this poll? Are we going to announce those, or can I see them somewhere yeah. else? Yeah, Once you'll I be hit. able to see them as soon as we end the poll. So we're going to end the poll probably in about uh, five, about ten more seconds. Excellent. This is a great tool. We have about almost seventy-seven percent voted so far. That's awesome, uh, Brad. Brad, run it again, please. We're going to let it be where it is as we get one look at it on the field, um, and then we'll see the. Uh, Excellent, 52%, 48%. Let's let this thing play itself out, Doug. It's amazing. You know, we talked to, I said 18 by 44 when we have this field that's usually 80 by 120. And we're talking about, you can go back to that place where it stops. We're talking about two inches at most deciding if we're going to have an unobstructed goal scoring opportunity here from the penalty mark or not. And if we go back to what the score of the game was and we're in the, we're in the second half, I mean, this is why it's a, it's a amazing example 
of why we need to get things right. And at the same time, the referee puts himself in a great position. He has a good look, right? He's looking between players. There's no, there's nothing obstructing. Um, and uh, we can see, we should be able to see that point of contact. This is a part of the field where we're not going to get any help for the rest of our crew. So those of us that, you know, were blowing the whistle that day, this is on us. And maybe a little bit of a clue here. The uh, like defenders are, are pretty smart when they're attacking in. Just so happens most of the time that if that foul occurs, it's usually on the outside with the player falling in and the really odd ones reversing, which um, we, we've all seen. With those dribbling out of the penalty area, sometimes that foul had occurred in and they fall outside the penalty area. Uh, so let's pick up the clues. Let's look. Let's know that the challenge is going to be down low. So that's where we're going to look for the point of contact. We don't necessarily have to look up top because it's the lunge from the back that makes this pretty apparent as to what uh, we're trying to pick out here. Um, the guy's wearing a captain's band. Listen, sometimes, you know, he's probably more of the more talented ones out there. These people know that they can get away with this guy either penetrating into the penalty area or let's cut, cut him down on the outside and get a free kick from an angle that may not be as advantageous as, as to him the attacker being in a dynamic play. And you saw from the results, I know we have 196 participants here, and I'm not sure how many people voted, but 52-48, we're split down the middle. We're absolutely split down the middle. Um, and isn't that the, isn't that the, the, uh, the crux of refereeing? Now I'll move on to the next, the next slide, please. The penalty area incident slide. Nope, there should be a slide there. I'm going to start. I'm going to start from the from the bottom and go up, actually, because you know one of the things that um, you know, has come into instruction, especially o over recent times, is like when you're entering the attacking third of play, our body, our has to, our body presentation or body posture, whatever it may be, has to start being square. We're now tasked with looking and being responsible for more than just the person with the ball, more than with the person with the ball and the challenge, because that ball can now be serviced in. Now there's um, there's a jockey, there's a there's a runs by uh, maybe off your back shoulder. There's off the ball stuff that's happening that's now in this penalty area, this 18 by 14 spot um, where we're going to have to make a decision. And, know, and we know that it's where the foul occurs. It's not where the ball is. Uh, that really that determines what the uh, what the restart is. So we have to be uh, conscious of that. That other the other two on there, the recognize and anticipate, almost go, go hand in hand. We recognize when as soon as the the, the play is about to start. In this next uh, this next clip, in fact, why don't we bring up the the clip uh, from I believe it's the Clemson game, which is absolutely amazing. And I stop it right where he recognize. You see the referee right there. Let's go back, Doug. Yep, go back, go back. Right there is fine. Like as soon as soon as that ball comes off from the white player and he pushes that ball through, that referee right now is in stride. He's recognized the fact that there's going to be a decision that needs to be made over here, and he's got to be on his horse to get over and get there. That there's a decision also to be made there, uh, offside or not offside, and we can we can you know eliminate anything after this. The challenge that occurs or anything like that, if, if he ends up being offside, and he's getting that information. This is amazing to see a referee take a look over to his right. The great, uh, you know, the fundamental, uh, you know, tools that we have in our bag. I think sometimes us at the professional level, and I know that in, in uh, the collegiate level, it's become more prevalent to where the communication systems uh, and, some, and sometimes rely on those. Hey, listen, the fundamentals, you can never go wrong with that, with the eye contact and such. So he's recognized that now. He's anticipated. Now he's put himself in a position where he's now left of the player without a, an obstructive view. And we can argue distance to the challenge all day long. But you, you know, and Mark and Lance will back me up on this that angle, angle, angle is the number one priority. And if we have to sacrifice distance to get it, then let's do so. This is an amazing challenge by the defender. Uh, I think it's Virginia Tech, if I'm not uh, mistaken. An amazing, solid challenge. Uh, but we have to be in a position to be able to see that. So, uh, you know, this is – listen, I love calling penalties as much as the next guy. 
but not calling them and, and recognizing this uh, this defensive challenge is is uh, just as, just as sweet. And he's there. He follows the run in. He shows presence when something when there may have to be another decision to be made. Uh, this is an excellent uh, example of refereeing. And, and Ted, uh, a couple points here to to what you just said is you know look for the clues. Some of the attendees here in the chat box are talking about clues, right? So you've got if you're not sure based on your angle if the defender played the ball or the opponent, look at the trajectory of the ball when it changes here too. You can tell that the attack the defender gets the ball first. And then the play, the attacker goes over top of them. Also, read the clues by the attacking player. The attacking player gets up right away, and he's going right to the ball. That should be your tell right there that no foul has occurred. Because what, what typically happens when there's a foul in the penalty area? The attacker is the first person that looks back at the referee and usually puts their hands up. And, and, right? Everybody, right. No, nobody on this field has their hands up. So everybody knows that this is a legal challenge. So use the clues if you don't have that angle. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point, Lance. You know, and you know, how do we, how do, there's a, I think there's a, a question out there, like how do you work to get the angles? You know, it, it's, uh, it's amazing what you know, I'm able to go out and work with, with young referees or other referees and taking one step to the left or one step to the right makes such a world of difference, right? You know, listen, our job got more difficult when the angles of TV cameras came into play and they put that nice one right behind the goal and, and everybody wonders why we can't get to that or we, we don't see it as clean as, uh, as uh, you know, Jim on his couch or whoever that may be. Um, but, you know, keeping your feet moving and, and, you know, anticipating and recognizing what's around you, not only what the play is, but like where people are moving and taking that one step left or right uh, can make a world of difference. Let's go to that next, uh, that next slide, um, Doug. No, we're way, we're way ahead. We need, um, uh... yep. Let's let this one play right here. We t now we talked about go back, uh, go back to the right, very beginning, and let's watch the the body position of the referee right here. The feet movement is all within a two three yard span, and see where that ball is going. All we're doing is turning our body, and now we've got. Let this thing play. Keep going. Boom! One, two, three, four players all of a sudden come into view. Right. The, the play is going down the left side. It's near the outside of the, of the penalty area. So maybe we have an inside outside. As soon as he cuts in, then we can adjust our position on that too. But now, because we've recognized it, because we're anticipating where that ball is going, we're in a position to see that the, the, foul, the foul has occurred. And, it, and this is tough because if you stop it right here, the ball is going to be still ahead of the attack. So like when Lance was talking about clues, this is another one of those clues where, and you see the right leg or the defender going to, through the right leg of, it, of the attacker to try to get a ball that's on the left-hand side. There's low probability of that. You see that right leg buckle. You see the way that he falls because there's some, there's some contact from behind. So he ends up uh, you know, falling over forward. It's not an unnatural or it's not a natural type of thing where he's trying to you know, bait us here. I mean, these guys are, are, are trying to be a little bit physical and get by. And we have an opportunity to, to, to be here because we've anticipated that play. Um, and, and this is another example of how we've changed our view simply by moving our body position and, and putting ourselves in the best position ultimately to, to make this call. So Ted, Ted, uh, talk a little bit about this position on the, this area of the field. Well, Lance, it's, uh, it's grassy down there and close to the goal line. Anything else do you need? Or, you know, a lot of the <laughs> – yeah, yeah, Dad. I'm joking. Lot, I'm purely joking. You know, a lot of the times our, our officials uh, tend to rely too much on our, our teammates for teamwork. 
yeah. uh, you know, in situations where it's really the referee's call and only the referee's call to make the decision. No, of course, you know, and, and like, I guess, you know, we learn and, um, you know, you learn real quick as you rise to ranks that everything falls on the referee's shoulders anyway, right? So you want, you ultimately end up taking uh, more accountability for decisions on the field. Uh, and maybe that's it kind of forces your hand into, you know, making a, a wider breadth of, of, of what you're, you're, you know, you're kind of relying on yourself to do. But that left hand side or that, uh, that, that kind of coffin corner down there, it, it's, it's you. That, that's it. It's you and, and your whistle and, and your ability to get there. There's nobody else on that field that's going to give credibility to this decision. And everybody's going to look to the referee anyway. So uh, we have to make sure we get a little bit wider here, especially when it's a, you know, when you know the decision is going to be made. Um, if someone's getting beat down there, then we don't want to move as much to the left hand side. Um, but, you know, ultimately, uh, that's all on us. How would you rate the uh, mechanics of the referee calling this penalty kick? Since we know you're the expert judging that, I well, I, that's very kind of you to be uh, on the expert thing. Uh, you know, listen, this is not a this is not a judging environment, right? I believe Mark said this is a safe environment for everybody, so I'm gonna hold off on on that right now. But if you're pushing me for an answer, like a three five, so let's move on to the next clip. The bully free zone. Bully free zone. Same thing here, right? We we're, we're recognizing it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup, so that's, there's there's nothing else to look at right there. The good thing right here is that since we're running towards the goal, our body present our orientation is already kind of it's going to naturally set up for us. We're not, you know, there's no turning of the shoulders because your body momentum is going this way. So if if this attacker does get by the defender and slots it in, uh, we have the ability to simply just move just that little bit and, and pick up that next decision. Uh, but this one, uh, for as easy as it looks from this, uh, the default midfield camera that is uh, all over the college game uh, and apparently is, it gives out all the answers, which uh, is always a, a fun conversation to have. Uh, this is uh, very, very clear where the ball is uh, you know, a touch ahead of the attacker. The defender can never get there. Uh, kind of a desperation tackle kind of thing. But, you know, it's, it's the what looks easy. When we do this and we do it uh, with confidence and we do it, uh, I guess, uh, I wouldn't say immediately, but we've recognized it. Boom, we've made that decision without hesitation and we're going to the spot. You know how much credibility that gives back to us because that's the expectation. And when the whole world especially expects a penalty and we're giving it, then you know we've, uh, we've done our job and there's not a conversation to be had or uh, a debate to be had there. This is definitely not a – a 52-48 type of thing. I think everybody in, in the room hopefully has penalty here. Um, and if we don't, then – and that whole running thing with the right hand, uh, the penalty is uh, called with the left hand, Lance, uh, just before you ask that question. All right, let's move on to the next, uh, the next clip, please. I don't know if it's the same referee over and over again, but – uh, once again, this is, a, this is an excellent job, and that's great. That's great. That's a, that's great form. But you know, it's it's one of those things we always talk about keeping our feet moving, keeping dynamic. When we lock ourselves in the ground, it makes it very difficult to move to that next phase, whatever that next phase may be. Um, I bounce a little bit. That's how that's how I do it. I I. You know, it's maybe it's a little bit of, of the, the baseball on me or whatever, but I, I've learned to balance on, on my toes and that keeps me engaged. It keeps me, uh, you know, agile enough to, to move on to the next thing. And to see the referee know that watch the entire play as it comes back to her, to stay back away from it and let the play develop, let players do what they do best. They're creative, they're talented, let them create. Um, and and let the, and give them space to do so. So we're not crowding in. We can see that from the six or seven yards away, um, and and get a, the the view that we we need to do. You know, it's sometimes we put in a ton of work, we get in a space, and nothing happens. And sometimes we get real lucky where we've put ourselves in a position, and we don't need to necessarily move that much, and and the play comes to us, and all we have to do is pull the trigger at the end. Let's go to that ne uh, next slide, uh, Doug. 
I promise we got some more polling coming up. In fact, uh, it'll be coming up, uh, I believe, on this. Uh, let's go back uh, one slide. We have, I believe, this is penalty area incidents on the handling. Not a video. Yeah, there we go. So it's very difficult to talk about like penalties and not talk about handling, but then you get in a conversation about handling. And I, I was just telling a good friend of mine uh, earlier today that's in the soccer world um, that handling will be the thing we debate until the end of time. It doesn't matter how clear you make it or if uh, IFAB wants to come out with one of those scientific looking, you know, things with your hands at the eight and the four, and that's all fine and good until you're actually moving on a field at full speed. Um, so we'll debate this in the hand of time and it's not for, for me to say, but we, we have to recognize this stuff happens in the penalty area and the, um, the outcome, the repercussions of it can be huge to the, to the attacking thing. All I will say, and I, Lance, correct me if I'm wrong. There's a handling presentation coming up later this summer. That is correct. Okay. When, when is that? Do we know? That will be in July as part of, as part of the uh, rule changes presentation. By Mark. Excellent. King. Awesome. All right, Mark, Mark's taking care of that. That's excellent. So, so that obviously we'll get into more depth here. The only thing I'll say to, uh, to attacking handballs in this day, don't have dirty goals. Attacker somewhere around the penalty area and all of a sudden it, it hits his hand and now we're going to ball in the back of the net. Don't have dirty goals. We want clean goals and clean goals only. Mark can go into more depth, uh, you know, here in July and, and I'd, I'd I look forward to you know tuning into that. From a defensive dynamic, defensive wall thing, the there's some great videos coming up that that showed a difference uh, of this. The dynamic, man. Sometimes it's easy as can be where the arms up high or the arms outstretched, and we're taking a shot and it's hitting that hand and the most outstretched portion of that that arm. And those are easy decisions to make um, when it starts getting closer to the shoulder. Or we're turning in and we're closing in the the defender closes in the the arm to the body, uh, you know that puts us in a in a bit more uh, of a difficult uh, decision to make. But once again, if we have all the facts, if we've uh, uh, you know put the considerations to those facts, and we come out with the penalty and 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 we've checked all the boxes, then that's the decision. And if we have it, then that's the decision. I mean, at least we need to get to that point. Let's go to the next clip. This is a great uh, example of defensive dynamic and how we've moved laterally here to get in a position to see this. Now, without hesitation, he calls this. Um, one more time right here. Doug, would you mind pulling up the, the poll for me, please? Now, I think we agree that it's, it's penalty. You can see where the clip is stopped and the arm is up. Um, and this is, man, this would be great in stim the stimulus quiz. I don't know if this exact clip was there. But is this uh, just a penalty only? Is this no, you know, with, with no card? Is this a yellow card? Or is this a red card? Let's see some results. So we've got no card at 47%, yellow card at 49%, and we actually have six people uh, for red card here. So the the one thing that, uh, man, it's an even debate in our in our pro camps, uh, although I think we've finally ironed, ironed this out. If we take a shot, if there is a shot on goal, and it is stopped by a defender uh, in a handling offense, that would be a yellow card and fall under stopping of a promising attack. That's default, simple. You can default to that anytime. Uh, you want to put somebody on, on a goal line uh, and no goalkeeper and they, they stop it with their hand? Certainly. I will, I, will lean, I will go to red card immediately for denying of a goal uh, by the handling. Uh, but if there's a goalkeeper back there and a, and a shots there, man, I'm, we're going to, 
we're going to go towards that yellow card 99, 99.9% of the time. Um, I'd be hard pressed to, to lean other, otherwise, but then again, soccer presents some, some crazy stuff like uh, Mike Dean this past weekend, referee with a full beard. So Lance, there's still hope for you with that mustache. Um, you know, when they can do it in the EPL, I guess we can, we can do it anywhere. Uh, no card, especially on this is not, I don't think is, is an option here because it's so clear. And the only reason that the, uh, the shot is stopped is by the, the one defender that, that the arm is up. We have another one coming up. That'll be another great polling, polling clip. Uh, but, uh, but penalty certainly and great movement by the referee to get that with the yellow card as misconduct. And, and Ted, to add to add to this, for more information and more clarification and education on handling for shots on goal, please check out Nysoa's YouTube channel, and you will see in the stimulus quiz uh, recap with Mark Geiger. He goes into great detail and breaks this down and provides a, a simplistic answer uh, for everybody to understand. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, heck, I go to Mark Geiger. Because he's and and in all in all seriousness, he is the best um, instructor of handling that I've come across. So why not lean on the best? Yeah. Let's go to uh, the next clip. And don't and if you go to the next uh, next slide, stop it right here. Let's not play it just yet. I'm going to tell you right now that this throw-in is happening down near the penalty area. Shocking, because we're talking about it. But here's a clue right off the bat that this guy is, what, 10 yards back from the touchline. He has all the intention of trying to get this to the middle of the penalty area, right? We want to put – this is going to be in, the, in uh, the drop zone, and we have to make sure we're positioned right to see that stuff. So let's let this thing play, please. Let it play all the way through. So let's uh, let's do the poll, please. And as we're doing the poll, uh, Doug, can you go back uh, and show? Once the ball's gotten into the penalty area, what I want to show is the uh, location of the referee. We go right there, just right there. I'll back on the, yep, right there. As you guys are taking this poll, one thing I do want to point out is like, you know, we talked about this at the very beginning, the, how, how dangerous it is for us to put ourselves in a position within the D. And listen, it's not lava. Um, funny enough, like there's a, the new show on Netflix, top 10 show on Netflix. Quinn loves it now. It says the, the floor is lava. Is this like a, the game we played as a kid? So this thing is not lava, right? We can move through it and we should move through it. You want to get to the next point as quickly as possible. We put ourselves in a position here and, know, and I get that he, the, the call is correct. And, and I get that he ends up having the best view from this position. But man, uh, there's a whole lot of luck here that that something doesn't go go bad. And when it hits us, I know now rules and law allow us for this, uh, you know, allow for a an outcome of that. But we don't want to put ourselves in the position of being in the way if we can uh, if we can get there. So point number one, uh, poll results are out. So no card for 57 percent, uh, yellow card for 43 percent. Uh, Lance, I, I believe you and I had, uh, did we differ on this? No, we agreed. We did agree on this one. I, I think we had, there was another one that we, uh, we, we differed on. And, and that's the great thing about this, right? That I, heck this is, uh, 140 people that were polled. So splitting is fine. I naturally, if 140 people can split, then two people can split. Uh, but, uh, but here is a great one where, Listen, if you go off the default, like we talked about in the last clip, that a shot is uh, that stopped by handling is, you know, is spa, is the is yellow card. Man, uh, like uh, my argument here is, is that a shot? Is it that good of a shot? Is it that great of a handling? And, um, you know, I almost, I, I was half joking to, to Mark Geiger earlier. I'm like, you know what, the, 
the uh, the lack of uh, skill in either is good enough. Like that's the that the embarrassment of the lack of skill in either just be the outcome and let's go penalty. So I think uh, the preference here would be no card. Uh, if you want to argue to me that that is a shot and it stops by the arm and you want a yellow card, I, I'm I'm good there. You can sell me on that. But uh, I think preference would be no card and, and that would be the reason why. A good point to this though is that if you see that the ball had originally come off his leg, uh, Doug, do you go back to where it contacts the leg? Mm-hmm. Right there, and it may be the back of the leg, or maybe the hip, and then then comes up, um, you, you know. And, and once again, Mark will do a great job in, in explaining why, uh, you know, later. This this barrier, the arms above the shoulder, uh, this is this is a deflection coming off the body. This is not him deliberately playing into that. Uh, and even though it's a short distance, like he's putting his arm above that, he's creating a barrier where it's an unnatural position for that to be, uh, that it's so clear that penalty uh, must be the decision. Do you want to add anything to that, Lance? Yeah, um, just actually just putting this in the chat box right now, and you kind of hit on it where, you know, the shot isn't stopped by the hand here. The shot is stopped by the body or the foot that deflects up into the hand. So therefore, it's not a technically a shot on goal per se, but it's a shot that was stopped by the body that resulted into a handling offense. So that's why I would lean towards only giving the PK in this situation, just as Ted had mentioned. Yeah, that's a great breakdown there. I like the words that you use to describe that. Let's move to the to the next uh, the next clip. Another good polling question. I love the fact that so many people are, are, are taking part. And if you're not, please jump in and, and take part. I can't see names over here. Um, and this will replay again for you. And it's going to stop at the point of contact. Let's put up that poll. Um, if penalty or no penalty. And Doug, while this polls up, can we go back to the beginning of the clip, please? As, we, as we're taking the, the poll here, watch the referee. And I'm watching in real time where like he's recognized the attacker has gone by here. But what we talked about at the beginning where there was some really great examples of the anticipation, that ball is now gone and we're still walking. Uh, and, and that puts us not in the greatest position. And if you play this in real time, Doug, if you don't mind, go back and play this in real time. When the decision is to be made, let's just watch the, the kind of the – the, you know, the body reaction of the referee. It doesn't look like certainty. It doesn't look like he was sure exactly which way we're going to go. And, and maybe that's somebody was in his way, but we could have worked a little harder to get a, a good angle on this or get a good view of this. Um, and, and all of a sudden, I think there's a bit of, of guessing what, what had happened here when, you know, maybe it's, it's a difficult decision enough by knowing that the ball hit the arm by the side of the defender. So I'm curious on the poll results. Uh, of, of this one. Man, that actually surprised me. I didn't think it would be 52-48 on no penalty. But I'm really I'm really proud of that. I'm excited about that. So, uh, Doug, can you go back to the point of contact? Should be that still shot? So once again, the, uh, the infamous uh, midfield cam – yeah, leave it right there, please. The midfield cam that gives us all the information to try to make a decision that happens, oh, I don't know, 50 yards down the way at an angle that's clearly not from the midfield cam uh, to see it. But everything that, that kind of jumps out to me, everything this feels – and listen, the, the, there's another – I go back to another, the, another part of the conversation I had with uh, a buddy of mine earlier today who who is a coach. He's actually a director of coaching for our club. Uh, and he had mentioned that, hey, you know, where DA was good about, you know, having controlled practices and so on and so forth, there's nothing like game experience. There's nothing like it. And nothing replaces it. The more games, the more we experience, the more we hit our bumps and bruises or whatever, or, or like those learning experiences are what make us better. So maybe we've seen this before. Maybe we've seen a ball – a defender moving kind of in that same direction, an attacker trying to get it by him, 
and the arm just happens to be by the side. And by because of that, it just happens to, to be, you know, keep the ball from going in the middle. This looks like a natural position to me. Everything about it feels like a natural position. And then, then again, if you show me a camera from behind the corner flag showing out and the, the, the arms away from the body, by all means, listen, that, that, that's unnatural and, and should, be, uh, you know, should be considered an infraction or a foul. And we go to the spot. But this feels like it's right next to the body to me. And if it is, if it's within that silhouette that we, uh, we now like to say, then, uh, then this is no penalty uh, you know, in, in my eyes. I believe this is in the uh, Tysoe instructional material for all those that, that get it during the season. Now that, that um, the wordy clip, the really wordy clip that had seven words on it, also referenced defensive walls. So can we go to the next one, please? In fact, real quick, Doug, I want to point something out. And I said this earlier. Can you go back to that clip? Just right at the end. Yeah, right at the end. Just move to the end of the clip, please. Right there is fine. Just stop it right there. So I don't know. It, it may be very difficult to see on your computer, but you know, we talked about how important a goal is in the outcome of a game, games that are tied or one goal. This right here is 2-2 with six minutes to play in the second half. And we wondered, like, and the, the magnitude of this decision is massive. And I know in the college game, we end up refereeing a lot of games in short periods of time. And sometimes it's just going to a new institution or can we get to that next city or, hey, maybe our flight may be delayed or something like that. And maybe it's just another game on our schedule. This may have decided, this penalty, no penalty, may have decided if one of these teams goes to the conference tournament, um, and we'll see at the very end, a great, great example of this, but this is six minutes to play in a hard-fought game that's tied at two to two. Uh, like, we owe, we owe that to them to be, you know, anticipating and, uh, you know, right there to make the call, and everything that comes along with that. So I just want to make that point. We're going to go to the next clip with the defensive wall, and I'll point out the, the very same thing. Uh, Doug, if you go to that uh, right here, right before we, we let this play, go back. Score here, 4-2. I'm guessing the green team up top is the green team taking this, this kick. I'll say for sure, even though the, cam, the lighting's terrible, that wall is inside the penalty area. And though it's on the side where – where we can say, hey, we can have our trail AR maybe help us out with something like this. We needed to recognize where that ball is and what that, uh, what that kicker intends to do. If this is going to be a shot, our focus must be on the wall. If it's going to be serviced over to a back post, and we can tell by the run-up, we can tell by the way he addresses it or the way the, the, the movements uh, of the, the backside attackers are, are going, then maybe we have to pull off of that a little bit, but we can't take our attention off the wall. And this is a great example why. That ball stopped. And I know it's kind of tough, once again, from the midfield camera, but there's an elbow that's 45 degree angle up from the guy jumping in the wall. And that ball makes contact with that elbow. So I know from the way that that a kicker's setting up, that it's going to be a shot on goal. He's going to drive that ball. And, and obviously they're at it. they need goals here at the end to try to tie this game up. And now we have a decision. Either we're not looking at it or we're not realizing that that may have been the case. Because at the same time, we had to worry about the encroachment there. What if they comes in and they encroach upon the 10 yards? We, we can retake the kick. We're at a part, point in the game where we know things get frantic. And the biggest decision, or one of the biggest decisions of the match is right here. And we have to be able to, to make that and recognize that. And once again, I know it's real easy. And uh, sorry to interrupt you there, Lance. It's real easy in dead ball situations to kind of plant our feet and be as still as a situation feels like it is. I, you know, I will say set up yourself in the position that you need to be in to see the most you can and then move as soon as you can move um, to put yourself in an even better position because that ball is not going to stay there the whole time. 
Ted, and this is a prime example of a best practice too, of if, if the free kick is near the penalty area and you're setting the wall and the wall for 10 yards is on the top of the penalty area on the 18, this is why we do not put the wall on the top of the penalty area. Because now you've got players that are jumping up and they handle it, handle the shot. And as a referee, it puts you in a really bad situation because now you have to make a decision. Was this inside the penalty area or was this outside the penalty area? Which in case you're going to be guessing. And anytime we start guessing, we always make mistakes. So it's always a best practice to find a way so that way you're not putting the wall on the penalty area line. That's a great point, Lance. Let's go back to that very first Providence clip. We talked about a penalty inside or outside was a matter of two inches, right? So how do we decide if they're near the penalty area line, if that elbow extended itself out? In the Q&A real quick, uh, Sonny had asked, should the referee be located away from <clears throat> zone 14? Man, I wish we never said zone 14 ever. We'd just go back to the, the, the D, away from the, the D a bit. Um, I, I'll, I'll go back to what I said, uh, that the, this play is a shot on goal. And by putting ourselves to the right of, of the ball is where we kind of need to be. But left, the ball is taking us out of, uh, out of the best position to make, that, make a decision in case it does go over the wall and there's a next phase. Um, and at the same time, we don't need to be locked in with our feet in the ground. We can set ourselves up to the right. And as soon as that shot comes out, we can you know, move our feet real quick back to the left. And then we're not in that zone that you had. Hey, uh, hey, Ted, quick question here from Gordy Wetmore from Kansas City. He yeah. asked the question is, Ted, what do you say to the players in the wall when setting the wall for, for being preventative? Yeah, absolutely. So, like, especially now with the, the clarification of what handling may be, like, I'm very visual on the field when, when I do a whole lot of everything. Uh, but when in the wall, we can, be, we can get that message across, not only the wall, but to everybody uh, that I'm like, you know, here – we got to keep that down, right? So in this case, maybe that would have helped prevent it. And if it didn't, man, does it set you up for having that, uh, you know, for, for saying like, hey, see, like that's, that's what we just talked about. Uh, so, you know, hands above the shoulder and then, hey, guys, keep your, your hands in. Anything in the body, I'll, I'll, I'll tell them that as well. Um, you know, we use spray so that my talk isn't, uh, you know, much towards encroachment these days. But when you don't have spray, use the, the tools that you do have. And that may be your voice in the conversation. Hey, I need, we're staying here right until that ball's kicked, arms in. And then inevitably you may get a question back. Hey, referee, is this okay? I'm blocking my face. That's not okay. Hey, referee, is this okay? Right. Um, and listen, it's not an educational session. We don't stay there forever. But to give the little pieces, like we, Talk to a goalkeeper, uh, to Santa's line at, at, uh, during a penalty kick. Very same thing that we can we can share here. Excellent. Uh, let's move on. We got some. Uh, we definitely got some more clips. So uh, we have a kind of a title slide right here. Simply the, from a misconduct standpoint, we have dog so challenges, non dog so challenges. That's uh, such a distinction to be to to know. To be aware of, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about the, the, the four Ds or a challenge on the ball at, or not on the ball or if we're inside the penalty area. It's a spot situation and that gets knocked down. It's very important. Let's go through some clips right here that are some good examples on this. Once again, score here, 3-2, midway through the, uh, through the second half. I believe this is uh, 22. Yeah, no poll on this one. I think there's a bit of a replay. You know what? And listen, the 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 cool walk, but he's he, you know referee gets himself in a position, can't get closer. You don't want to enter that penalty area. But he's put himself in a position to see that challenge. Almost gets blocked out there, but maybe that's that's more bad luck. This is, you know, if I would be criticizing the referee here, I'd be getting into, you know, you're pulling stuff out just to do that, and and that's that's clearly not fair. It's not, not anything I wanted over my career. This is great to get in that position. Great looking down the barrel, 
And then like the, you know, there's a confidence in that walk. I'm assuming the whistle had been blown already, pointing at the spot. We're stopping the clock as we do uh, for the for the penalty kick. And then uh, the clip kind of ends from here. But, you know, that's a this is a, a dog so challenge for the ball situation. So we would expect yellow card and defender here, uh, which is great because these are the only two people involved with the play. There should be no uh, concern about getting the right guy. As you can see here, excellent. Seven pushes the ball past the defender. It's just going to be him and the goalkeeper uh, if, uh, if he doesn't get fouled here. Uh, there was a uh, question by Mark just on the back one. Uh, does that allow the players to protect their faces in a wall at a free kick? Uh, that would be uh, no. Like, let's not allow, uh, allow for this. Uh, just put your head down a little bit and, and head the ball right back to where it came from. Now, can we go to that, uh, the next clip, please? So I tell you what, sometimes, sometimes we get caught and play develops so quickly. And you can see the referee right here where he's in a dynamic position. And maybe for whatever reason, you can't get past the guy or you're moving laterally and you're just caught there. He goes off screen. But as you can see, like that very last move, Doug, if you go back to that very last moment, you can see the referee in screen. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yet one more frame right there, right? So he leans. He's like, you know what? I've lost the distance, but I've got to see what happens here. He knows that the ball is going in, and, and this is a classic example of choosing angle over distance. His first steps are to laterally to the right instead of uh, you know going downfield. If he runs straight, he's got five, six guys in front of him. He may not be able to see anything, and then all of a sudden, like, hey, you were closer but we didn't get the decision right. This is a, I mean, this is a really intelligent move for, uh, of referee and right here, intelligent referee to move out of the way. Doug, let's play this thing through. Right, you, the clues here, if you can't see everything, that ball does not move. The ball does not change direction uh, once the challenge is made. Um, if you're not seeing the whole picture in, and this is, uh, I say it all the time, that dog so is one of the most difficult things for a referee. Uh, a referee it's a difficult decisions for a referee to make. It's the most difficult thing for me to, to, to make. That where we're looking at this and we know that that's the, the, the last defender or second to last defender, we might not have that information, right? And if you need that information or you're an assistant referee here and can offer that information, we need to do that. This is misconduct. It's dog so challenge for the ball, spa. Uh, or sorry, Dr. So challenge with the ball, yellow card. Uh, and we need to make sure that that misconduct is, is, is issued. That is the only outcome here. Let's go to that next clip, Doug. I believe we've got a, it's going to be a poll, uh, a poll question for us. Let's stop it right there. Let's throw out the poll, please. But Doug, if you go back to the beginning of the clip and let's play it through as they're answering the poll. But this is the desperation play by a defender. She doesn't care if she gets the ball. Absolutely doesn't care if she gets the ball. She just not, doesn't want, want, to, uh, want to get beat or, or this girl to come in to, to, to score on him in, in the run of play. Do whatever she needs to to take her out. I'm going to tell you, this is not a reckless tackle. I'm not looking for a yellow card for... Um, for a reckless tackle here. I'm looking for a yellow card on uh, Doxo uh, playing for the ball or no card. Lance, this was the one that we, uh, we may have differed on, right? I ended the poll. We agreed on this one. Did we? Not surprisingly. I mean, you know, a futsal referee agreeing with a FIFA outdoor referee, you know, it's you're in good company, Ted. You see how these goals are anchored, Lance? They're like they remain on the field all the time. 
Oh, they're not weighted, so they like you know to, to go back. I well, listen when they yeah you know when they have to play like dodgeball or or volleyball in the gym or something you got to kind of remove your. And we usually have suits. somebody coming out and like wiping the sweat off the court too, so it doesn't get. Stuck. <laughs> That's awesome. As long as the towels are are, are sponsored and logoed, you know. I, listen, I yellow card eighty four percent, no card eight, it was sixteen percent. I love, I'm surprised it's this lopsided. Uh, I, I am, and I'm only surprised because of the location of where the foul is. Uh, you know, this is way out to the left-hand side. This ball gets by the goalkeeper, uh, and maybe there's a little bit of pace to it. So for her to, you know, put this in after she gets by the goalkeeper is uh, is asking a lot from that angle. But I think... Absolutely, soccer expects a yellow card here. That goalkeeper's only intention to take that out. When goalkeepers come out of their goal mouth, we're always raising, you know, raising our level of, um, you know, our, our awareness. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the National Atlanta game, the first week of the MLS season, when goalkeeper was at midfield, and man, the media had a field day with it. And this is within the 18 by 14 that we, we've been talking about, but. Even at that angle, goalkeeper coming out, open mouth, you know, yellow card ends up being the decision on the field. I think that's that's def- that's the decision that we expect uh, to have here, even though it may be a little bit wide. Uh, let's not make it uh, more complicated than we need to uh, in, in this case. I am surprised at how uh, Aaron Corman, how is this not reckless? Uh, it's at night and uh, – it's at night and the lighting's terrible. So there's that. There's an open, Eugene, there's an open goal. Yes, we consider the, the direction of dog. So could you get away with no card say so, Like, I think, I think ultimately you can, I, you want to, you want to argue the other way that you, can we get away with no card here? I think absolutely. Ultimately you can, it's a great discussion clip. Um, but you know, if your considerations lead you down the path, a yellow card, it's supported, and it's such a bad word, but it's definitely supported. Um, and if it, your considerations lead you down the path of uh, of no card, it's definitely supported as well. If you uh, if you're flipping a coin here, and we're just guessing, and we're not knowledgeable in the rules or the laws of the game, um, then I have a really big problem with the decision either way. But if we're checking the boxes, then um, then certainly uh, we can fall on either side of this. I'm not dying on a bridge for this one. Hey Ted, I got a, I got a, I got a, a comment on this one too. Sure, Lance. So you know, look at the time in the match when this occurs. Yep. A lot of us, and I say us because we have to be honest with one another, is that a lot of us are not expecting a game-changing decision to have to be made in the first minute of the match. We're not prepared. So this is a prime example of why you need to be prepared from the opening whistle until the final whistle, because this happens less than a minute into the match where you have to make a decision. Not only is it penalty or no penalty, but you also have to make a decision. Is it yellow card? Is it red card? Is it no card? What am I going to give? So if you're not mentally focused at the start, you're, you're going to be, uh, again, you're going to be guessing on your decision. Yeah, it's a great point. You know, you, we Lance, we talked before this presentation, and you mentioned a uh, conversation you had with Matt Hockey. And there's one thing I remember uh, distinctly when when I had met Matt uh, back in back in the day. It's got to be six, seven years ago now. It's like we don't want like the, after you blow the whistle is not warm up time, right? It's you're you're warmed up and ready to go and, and sharp from that opening whistle. And this is a great example. Fifty four seconds in. Give or take, fifty-three seconds in, and uh, and we've got a breakaway that that results in a in a really big decision. So that's a great point, Lance. Thanks for uh, bringing that in, Doug. You go to the next clip. This is a this is a great clip as well.
All right, Doug, can you pull up the poll on this, please? And let's go back to the beginning of the clip while they're while they're uh, they're taking the poll. The one thing here, and and listen, it, it's why I don't like still shots. It's absolutely don't like still shots because it doesn't. Still shots are are great at showing a point of contact and giving absolutely no context to anything else. Um, and even though this, where we're seeing a, a point of contact and we're seeing the referee in absolute perfect position like like print this out and put it on your wall type of thing man like this is walking 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 to get there and it, you know there's something about when we move we stay we get engaged there's something that that gets the you know the, the adrenaline that's running through us that keeps us sharper and, and more focused and the, when we do this, we have a tendency to get lackadaisical. And we just happen to be in a position uh, to see everything that we need to see. But once again, I don't want to get there because of luck. I don't want to, you know, there, there has to be a bit of a uh, bit of work rate to this because this game, as we see, again, is one goal is a one goal game. And apparently it's at the half uh, per, the, uh, per the scoreboard, which is really cool because I've never seen a game being played at the half. but. Decision on, on misconduct is great, but you know we have we have no card here, which I'm interested. I would be interested to hear why, and I, I get this is not the form that we can grab answers uh, for that. But if someone wants to come in and chat and, and answer why they had no card, I'd, I'd be really interested to hear that. Then you have a majority at 55% being yellow card, and then 22% being a red card. And I'm guessing that the red card group is red card because of dog so non-play on the ball with a pushing foul uh, of some sort uh, instead of, um, like I said, you know, the play on the ball. And, you know, I think, you know, we, we go to, in Lance, if something comes up on the note card, I really want to hear, hear why, because there's enough, there's enough people here. There's more people at that than red card. So I really want to know why. Anyone had no card, please raise your hand and we'll bring you in. We'll bring... Yeah, raise your digital hand and we'll bring you into the conversation. Yeah. Or if you're in Verbella, you can actually raise your real hand. Uh, but that's a, only a few people know about that. Whatever. Um, the, I think, I think when, when, when law was changed, and I know that I saw rules adopted law, um, you know, it was meant to back off that double jeopardy, triple jeopardy type of thing. And if we know the intent of why a law or a rule is in place, I think it helps us get to the right outcome, um, you know, a bit better. It, you know, we're making a more educated decision using that book that uh, you know is always uh, you know paperback, always flexible, the old Alfred Kinitis, uh way. You can bend this thing every which way you want. That that defender intends to make a play on the ball. It is terribly challenged or timed. It's terribly timed. Um, but then again, uh, an attacker coming at a goalkeeper and a goalkeeper dives and ends up missing the ball and gets the attacker when the ball is 15 feet away by the time he gets contact. Listen, the guidance there is that was a play on the ball. Horribly timed. And I think we can lean, we can lean here too. There's enough lower body contact that he's going uh, towards the ball. It just hasn't gotten there yet. <clears throat> I th it's going to be a shot on goal here. So a one touch shot on goal, we hope, uh, by the attacker with nothing in front of him except the goalkeeper and the goal mouth. Uh, so, like, the preferred answer here is, is yellow card. For those that went red, if that was the reason you went red, I understand why. Um, Mark, did anybody raise their digital hand for no card? No, the, the hand went down. This is the last chance. Anybody? Anybody going once, going twice, sold to no but Jennifer Dumain. Let's bring her in. Yes, Jennifer. She's coming in. Yet to unmute. Yeah, Jennifer, can you hear us? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yeah, clear as day, Jennifer. 
Okay, I guess I initially, I didn't want to, I couldn't watch the clip too many times because I didn't realize when the poll came up, it actually covered the clip. So I went once and then I went with my gut feeling and it just kind of looked like the, it looked kind of like a 50-50 play on the ball. But as I've watched it more, I can see contact with, that looks like the right leg of the attacker. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, yes, initially I did answer I would give no card, but if there is in fact contact as it looks now, then I would probably go yellow. But I guess if it were just a 50-50 ball being slotted across the middle like that, if there were no contact, I would say it's fair play. So, right, so you had no card because your initial gut had uh, no penalty, right? Correct. Correct. I thought, yeah, I didn't think that there was actually, in fact, contact until watching the replays. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, uh, listen, once again, we, we work from the midfield camera uh, with bad lighting, but uh, I do so appreciate you, uh, you jumping in and explaining, uh, you know, your decision. I'd love to hear the reasoning behind it. And once again, I will always fall back on if we have good reasoning and it's supported by what has actually happened Hey, like we're, we're going to get to a decision. And as you can see, we're split on, on everything. Nothing here has been hundred percent. So thanks for uh, jumping in, Jennifer. And also to note, Jennifer was a 2019 Terry Vaughn NISO referee of the week winner. Uh, Excellent. Hey, congratulations to her. On Dad, we have one more, one more person Pedro, here with a comment. Sure. Please. Hello. Yes. Uh, all right, so uh, I did uh, no card. Um, the reason why was because attacker never had control of the ball. Is there um, considerable? Yeah, I, I, I mean it goes into the you know the attempt or the opportunity to to gain control, right? I believe that's the actual language, Lance or Mark. You can you can lend to that the opportunity to gain control. It's one of the, like a classic if you had a, a ball slotted through and this is 30 yards out from goal and you know they're running onto it and the guy gets tripped up, same thing, the opportunity to get to the ball. This ball is going to come right to the attacker's feet. He's not going to have to change his run or change his body uh, posture or, or orientation to, to get a good play on this. Uh, and that opportunity is going to be there. And without the foul, uh, this is going to be a shot on frame. Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, and David, the actual, okay. the actual terminology is likelihood of gaining or regaining control of the ball. Excellent. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not really good on uh, the particulars. You know, I like to use the feel and the, and the gray area that we're given. So I, I appreciate that, Lance. Uh, David Nunez, did Ted say that he attempted to play? Yes, uh, there was, a, I believe there was an attempt to play the ball here. And just horribly mistimed. Hand on the back, hands on hands on backs are not fouls. Not all contact is a foul. And like I said, there was enough of a uh, never enough of contact on the lower body uh, that uh, looks like that it it was uh, intended to be a play. Excellent. So, listen. This this whole presentation adds or you know, comes to comes to this, right? We have spoken about um, you know uh, elements of of what we need to look for in a penalty area. What makes our decision the way it is? The the enormity of the importance of of our decision that that's ultimately made. The scores of games. How much one goal impacts it. And there was one clip that came out, and I'm thrilled. And I and I thank uh, you know Lance and Mark for providing the um, you know a database of, of college stuff. I think we learn the best with clips that come from uh, the environment that we work in. So I, I thank you guys for that uh, tremendously. Let's show this this uh, this last clip. Just bring it up. Don't play it just yet, Doug. Um, but this uh, last slide here, I want it to be known that this is a Big Ten conference game. Uh, you know, the number one seed in the conference, Indiana. I'm not sure if they were number one in the country at the time. I know uh, that it, it may have been fairly close. We are in the second overtime. There hasn't been a, a blemish on a, either goalkeeper's record or, or uh, on this thing, right? Let's play this thing out.
there's a couple of things I really want to show here, Doug. And, and like I said, you know, you can see the scoreboard, you can see the time, you see how, de how deep in this game we are. And right at the beginning, I want in full time, I want you to show the referee coming to screen because we don't get the, the luxury of seeing where he's coming from. And, and, and that's so important when you guys real quick, when you guys look at educational clips, or you watch yourselves move on a field, look at, start at where you come from and then how we've gotten there. Just like I said on that clip a, long, a little while ago, just because he ended up in the right spot doesn't mean that we've worked our best. We have done our best to, to put ourselves in that position. But let him come in a frame. Let's stop it right there. <coughs> He's coming in very athletic, coming with with energy. We're we're what twenty or you know almost uh, fifteen minutes into overtime. That's a hundred and five hundred and six hundred seven minutes here uh, that we're dealing with. He's in a position that he's going to end up seeing what that next phase is, which is going to be a shot here. He's at an angle that sees it. Let's go to that second replay. Let this play through. Decision is going to be made. Let's go to the second replay and stop it on the point of contact. We're actually stop it where the guy has his arms behind his back. This is another thing where Mark's going to speak to this in July, but we have to recognize this is referees that he, this is the starting position of the defender. So this is not unlucky that his arm happens to be out here. Go ahead and play that through Doug. He's actually making himself compact. He's doing what he probably should be doing. And then boom, Let's put this barrier out because God forbid this shot's going to get to my goalkeeper or go in the back of the net. I'm not losing here. And, and lo and behold, you know, he ends up put, uh, putting the ball in the spot. It's penalty. This is as great and courageous as a referee decision as we have, we have to make. The spotlight ends up being on you just because of it. You're going to get dissent from it. It doesn't mean you're wrong. And, and we're not, we don't need to second guess ourselves here. We've worked and put ourselves in this position. <clears throat> We've made the correct decision and we're confident in that we walk off the field here. Even if this is what decides the game, it wasn't you that decided the game. It was uh, this uh, defender that made the decision to extend his body in a natural uh, position and uh, create a barrier and, and so, and so be it. Because so are you yes, thinking, is, what kind of mis are you thinking misconduct here at all? <laughs> I'm thinking um, I'm going to a spot and I'm going home, Lance, because it's been a long night. <laughs> but on the way out, yes, uh, listen, it goes back to the default. This is a uh, this is a handling offense that stops a shot on goal, and thus it is spa and a yellow card. The only thing I would say that Soren. Uh, didn't do if you go to that go to the the next slide here Doug is to have the ultimate position to call the penalty uh, this is uh, a, uh, a very kind gift that I got that is actually a silhouette of me last year <clears throat> I think in a Mexico game I believe um, so listen let's get them right let's have some good form um, and you know I, I hope uh, that uh, I hope that the presentation was was uh, was good and educational, and we were able to cover some some good things. I, I can't reiterate enough how important that eighteen by forty four uh, spot is. Even though I'll be the first to say, you know, the total game, uh, how we manage things, how the ebbs and the flows, how we orchestrate out there, is ultimately that's our that's our number one job. But man, when we get down here, we got to raise that uh, that focus and. Uh, just a tad bit more. Matt, that's what I got. Ed, excellent job. We thank you for uh, providing us your TED Talk on penalty <laughs> area incidences. I think this is the first TED Talk uh, we've ever had with NYSOA. And the fact that you went a good solid hour is, uh, you know, it's going to be fantastic for the viewers to watch in, uh, on our YouTube channel. So Excellent. thank you Ed, for the exceptional learning experience for all of us. Uh, thank you for each of you for attending all the attendees. We had up to 210 attendees tonight, which is fantastic considering it's a Tuesday night. Uh, many of us are back to work. Uh, so, you know, we do have to get up early in the morning. So, you know, it's fantastic. This, this is why we do this is because of the dedication of the NISOA family to become better 
referees. So thank you. Uh, let, now let's, and, and last but not least, is we'd like to thank, um, Mark and I would love to thank uh, Never Ends Productions, uh, Doug and Lana. There they are in the studio right there. So Doug and Lana, Never Ends Productions is our official broadcast partner of NYSOA. And as many of you have seen with the stimulus quizzes, as well as uh, the summer educational series, they will be providing the production support for us. And we couldn't have done it without them because as you've seen, the biggest challenge when we have these webinars, especially large webinars, is the ability to have clips with clarity. And I think we were able to accomplish that today, even with 210 people on the, uh, on the webinar. They were very clear clips, even those ones that were close to the penalty area. Uh, July 11th, join us for the session one of the four part series of the rule changes. And that's gonna be at 5 p.m. Now the times uh, are not consistent. They, they rotate from 5 p.m. to noon because we want to take into consideration our West Coast membership. Uh, we want to make NISO has done extremely uh, proud work to make our membership inclusive when it comes to our membership that spans across the country and even into Hawaii. Uh, we'll have Corey Rockwell and Mark Catalesic presenting in the upcoming uh, month in July talking about communication. Uh, I know I've personally spoken to both of them, and those two individuals are some of the best communicators uh, out on the collegiate soccer pitch that I know personally. And they're going to also talk about uh, tips and strategies uh, and best practices for uh, managing the game and managing communication when it comes to COVID uh, and social distancing. So that's kind of a little special wrinkle that we have with their presentations that, that's definitely worth uh, listening to and, and watching. Lastly, but not least, don't forget about our weekly trainings with Coach Trent on YouTube. Uh, every weekend, Coach Trent puts us through a workout, a circuit style workout. Those of you that have seen the YouTube channel, usually it's, it's always live, but it's also recorded. Uh, you saw me uh, struggle through the fitness. And I'd like to say it's not because of my fitness level. I'd like to say it's because it was 108 degrees out here in South Florida after a thunderstorm. So I just want to put that uh, disclaimer in case some of my assignments. It wasn't are indoors. And it wasn't indoors as Ted uncle and Mark Cahan would. Amen to that buddy. So, um, but coach Trent will be providing workouts. Also, we, we release three running workouts every week, starting on Monday. And those can be found on nicesoa.com. And those workouts uh, are geared to help everybody get ready for the collegiate season, the start of it, and also uh, respect the social distancing um, guidelines in your local uh, communities. Uh, when you're finished with your workouts, please upload a photo of your workout that you proudly finished and uh, tag us on social media, NYSOA Fit. And we're going to start doing some raffles for some gift cards and some prizes. And those prizes include uh, our, our sponsors, Official Sports, as well as our partner, Lululemon. So we're going to be able to provide some, uh, some unique gifts to everybody that's uh, to the winners. Um, so again, Mark, Ted, Doug, everybody on the call, thank you very much for attending. We greatly appreciate everybody's support, and we look forward to seeing everybody in July. Be safe. Happy whistling. I borrowed that. <laughs>